photographer based in Seattle. I shoot on the X100V as well as the X-T3 and today I want to take you on a photo walk with me. I've been shooting with Fujifilm for two and a half years now. I started with the X-T3 which I picked up in peak pandemic when I was looking for something to do that I could do outdoors but safely away from other people and I've not stopped since. Now what you won't see from me is any gear reviews on the X100V, Fujifilm, things like that. I love watching those videos but there are so many amazing photographers on YouTube who can give you much better reviews than I can. But what I want to do is bring you along with me, show you the spots that I like to take pictures at, the pictures that I take, and some of the settings and film simulations that I like to use. Now I'm not a professional, I do this all for fun and I really love it and that's why I want to share with other people how I do it. Before getting into the shots that I took, I want to go over the setup with the X100V. I don't think I'm the first one to say this, but the thing that I personally love about this camera is how small it is and I can just stick it in my fanny pack, which I always have with me, and can get the shots that I normally wouldn't get with my X-T3, for example. Because it's so big and bulky, it draws a lot of attention. I like to just be able to stuff my X100V in my bag. Uh, when I don't want to have my camera out and then take it out whenever I do. On the X100V, I put a ProMist filter. I believe this one is uh, 1 4th, which is the right... It's, it's enough diffusion that you know it's there, but it's not too much that the highlights are being overblown. And because I like to shoot straight out of camera JPEGs, I want my pictures to have that kind of hazy, highlight, um, kind of overblown look straight out of camera because I like to minimize the number of editing that I do because mostly because I'm lazy and also for editing for me it needs to be a specific kind of picture where I know I want to get the most detail out of it so I'll take the raw file, I'll, I'll add my own um, color edits to it. but. Really, with this camera, my goal from it from the beginning was to just increase the number of pictures I take that I like and enjoy and not really worry about the edit. And it's really freeing once you finally embrace that. Of course, I shoot JPEGs and RAW, so I have both. So I do go back on some images and edit the RAWs if I don't like how the film simulation looked or I want to do something different with it. So on this day, the sun was really bright, perfect daylight conditions, but not too harsh. So when I was outdoors, I was shooting an f8 and an aperture priority and letting the camera do the work. I didn't need to touch it at all. But later on, you'll see I did adjust some of the settings due to the lighting that I was in. But for the most part, aperture priority f8. So here's my go to setup usually consists of a fanny pack, X100V, and the fit, of course. But before we shoot, coffee. Ever since I moved to Seattle about a year and a half ago, I came from California, Southern California specifically, where I was used to driving everywhere. I never lived in a city in my life. And now that I live right outside of downtown Seattle, my favorite thing to do is to take the light rail from my neck of the woods down to the middle of downtown where all the action happens. The move to get to Seattle Center is to take the light rail, at least from where I'm coming from, which is about a 10 minute ride. And then at Westlake Station, jump on the monorail, which is another unique Seattle uh, form of transportation that takes you from Westlake Station all the way to the Space Needle, which is where Seattle Center is, and that's where we're gonna end up. And what I love about it is that it still uses the Orca card, which is the card that you saw previously that you used to tap to get around, and it's a five minute ride, which is really quick, save some steps, because we're gonna be doing a lot of walking. now. When you think of Seattle, you definitely know what the Space Needle is. It's an iconic, it's pretty much a landmark of the city, but for me, so many people have taken pictures of the Space Needle, better pictures than I could ever take, so I always try to do my own spin on it, either look for reflections or 
for subjects. So now that I'm at Seattle Center, what I like to do is explore. There's so many buildings and areas around it that um, I kind of find every time. In this case, I meandered around to this one building that had some cool ref reflections and some cool light. Um, the subjects were pretty infrequent and I wasn't exactly happy with them, but I was glad I found it and I took note for another time. Well, I'll try that again. Wandering around, taking pictures, not exactly excited about what I'd taken so far, but you know, it's a good warm up. I came across a skate park that I'd never seen before and I was really excited because the lineup of it is great. You have the Space Needle in the background and then there were skaters there who obviously are trying their tricks um, to impress their friends, um, but it seemed like once they saw me with the camera and I was kind of taking pictures, they really were trying to show off some of their tricks and I was not mad about that. So here are some pictures that I took. So I could have stayed at that skate park for a long time, but I needed to get a move on. And so the next place that I like to go, which is on the way to the waterfront, is the Olympic Sculpt Sculpture Park. And this is a really cool area. It, you get a really nice view of the Puget Sound, which is the water that is against uh, the city of Seattle. And from here, there's a lot of people just walking through walking their dogs, on their lunch break, things like that. And you can get some really cool compositions, which you'll see right here. This place is always great because it's always busy with people. And I really like to take contrasty pictures of people as my subjects where you basically see their silhouette. There's also some great angles that you can take pictures from. Next, I like to move on from the sculpture park to walking along the waterfront. And to be honest on this day, I was having a hard time finding the right pictures that I liked. The Olympics were out and there was snow on them and it was beautiful. And I always try to get pictures of some of the Washington ferries that are iconic, but it just wasn't doing it for me today. Um, and it happens. At this point, I'm ready for lunch. So let's eat. So Pike's Place, if you don't know what Pike's Place is, it's an iconic location. I keep saying iconic, but these are really the um, famous areas of Seattle, at least like tourist areas. But at Pike's Place, there's so many vendors, like hundreds of them. And every time I go, I find something new that I never saw there before but I wanted to shout out my favorite place, which is Pasta Casalinga. It's a pasta place you order by the plate. It's a pretty reasonable price. It's all handmade pasta and the menu changes every week. And you can see here, there's a choice between um, from the sea, from the farm. Besides the Space Needle, you've probably definitely heard of Pike's Place. It's where Starbucks is from, but there's hundreds of vendors and it's just a really great place to go every time you're in Seattle and it's really fun to be local to here because I can try something new every time I go there but I'm pretty loyal to that pasta place and I need to try other ones so if you're from Seattle or you visited here and you have any recommendations please leave them below. This is great though as a huge mix of people who are there you have tourists you have locals you have all sorts of walks of life showing up there and it makes for a really interesting mix to take street photos. If you follow any photographers on Instagram who are based in Seattle and do street photography, they've definitely taken a lot of pictures at Pike's Place and that's for a good reason. There's so many subjects there, there's so many interesting compositions you can take there and there's it's almost like a chase to see who you can find and what compositions you can take. I don't like to take pictures of just people's faces. I think it's kind of intrusive. I, I, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes them uncomfortable. I like to capture subjects from a far enough distance away 
where they're a part of the landscape or ideally without their faces showing. Now I could take pictures at Pike's Place for hours and I think I'm going to make a whole nother video specifically on here and recommendations that I have for taking pictures here and show some examples but I want to show you some of the shots that I took here and honestly these are some of my favorite pictures that I've taken. It's been a long day and I'm tired, but I actually am really happy with some of the pictures I've taken, but this doesn't happen all the time. There's so many times where I go out and I maybe get one picture that I'm happy with, but also there's times where I go out and I get zero, but that's okay. It's all part of the process and I love just walking around, um, getting outside, practicing it, getting better, and it's just a fun time. Anyways, those are my pictures. Let me know in a comment below what you thought of them. Also, let me know if you have any recommendations or questions about photography, Seattle, myself. I'm happy to answer any of those. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm pretty active there. Also, feel free to shoot me a DM with any questions that you have. I have a lot of ideas for this channel and I'm excited to make these videos and get them out to you. So. Please drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks!